right as we were coming back and there was so much else going on that I didn't even really address it, but we talked about it a little bit earlier and he did publish this in the gray zone also um, was that Kit had published something in gray zone about being censored on Twitter. So following years of pressure from Israel lobbyists and British spooks, I was finally banned by Twitter X. What does my removal say about Elon Musk, who flaunts his opposition to censorship while promising to build an everything app where you can lose access to banking and messaging for violating dubious speech codes? Not just banking and messaging, yeah. but also potentially income for those who are blue checks. We're not. Uh, we're not generating any income. We're not monetized on Twitter. We don't have a big enough account anywhere. <clears throat> it says that on February 17th, he was suspended from Twitter without warning. The cause was mass reporting by Zionist activists that he defended. His removal was justified on the basis that he violated Twitter's rules against quote-unquote viol violent speech. Having endlessly committed mm -hmm. violence on the platform, in particular the Gaza genocide, I'm flummoxed. Not least because a post from one of my Zionist detractors, which openly calls for me to be battered on a weekly basis, quote-unquote, over my political views yeah. remains extant and publicly up today without being suspended. And there it is. Don't fuck with us or we'll rip your nuts off. Yeah, that, that too. So, despite repeated requests for clarity from Twitter, I have no idea whether I will ever be reinstated. In February, I received from support stating that the suspension will only be reversed after three months. But just a few sentences later, the email contradicted itself stating in closing that the ban would last just a month. Meanwhile, mm. meanwhile, whenever I log into Twitter, my profile appears to have zero followers or follows. I cannot view or search anyone's tweets, including my own, and my DMs are inaccessible. Have they been erased? A landing page message yeah. reads, quote, Your account is permanently in read-only mode, which means you can't post, repost, or like content, and you won't be able to create new accounts. What? They did this to Joe, I think, at one point. Mm hmm In January 2024, Twitter purged a number of prominent, predominantly left-wing users without warning or explanation. Their suspensions were lifted only after a deluge of complaints poured in to the personal account of Elon Musk the libertarian tech maven and self-proclaimed free speech warrior who won't even have to take a position on Julian Assange who purchased Twitter with his personal fortune. Uh, if I remember correctly, that the, the people purged were Alan McLeod and Ken Klippenstein, among others. Those were the two most prominent at that point. Yeah. Kit is grateful that scores of Twitter users have done the same following his own suspension. However... Musk has kept mum about his case. I wonder why. While I may have not, while, while I may not have as many followers as those abruptly de defenestrated in January, Kit's work has mostly been sh most widely been shared on Twitter, with some posts gaining millions of impressions. Most viewed was my was his December 2023 revelation that an unadvertised and unnoticed Russian government plane was parked in DC's Dulles Airport a visit which likely represented the beginning of the Ukraine proxy, proxy war's end. We're still waiting for that, by the way, Kit. Yeah, I hope so. if I hope only. that's true. Yeah, if only. So six to four months later, there's no, no end in sight. We just spent, gave him $60 billion more. Kit says this is quite yep. a remarkable turnaround, given the concerted effort to suppress his Twitter output for as long as he's used the platform. One of the most illuminating disclosures in the Twitter files exposed how the hypersensorious regime that controlled the social media platform before Musk's takeover required explicit authorization from managers to throttle accounts with more than 100,000 followers. I hear that. Until then, engineers right. had free reign to covertly censor, suppress, and shadow ban anyone they wished, however they wished, without any oversight whatsoever. That seems like it might be yeah. problematic. This, se 
This secret protocol offered a compelling explanation for curious developments regarding my own Twitter account in the summer of 2022. For 18 months following my 2021 registration for Twitter, my follower count remained stubbornly low. Hmm. This was until the gray zone unmasked celebrity journalist, quote unquote, Paul Mason, as a British intelligence asset who directly coordinated attacks on anti-war figures and movements with a friend in the foreign office. It was the lead investigator on this series of reports. The exposés, of course, we know now, generated significant attention the world over. His followers duly yeah. began multiplying by hundreds daily. Curiously, however, when he was, whenever he was a few dozen shy of 10,000, the total would crash back down. We've seen this too, the purges. Evidently, Twitter staffers and powerful forces breathing down their necks were absolutely determined no one saw what I had to say. Gosh, that sounds like it might be happening to another account we we, we may know. Yep. Um, besides the exposés of Mason that, uh, that he worked on, there was his tw October 2019 report revealing, revealing that Gordon McMillan, a senior Twitter executive, as a member of the 77th Brigade, which was mentioned earlier, the British Army's shadowy psychological warfare unit, which specializes in the weaponization of social media. Nothing to see here, folks. And McMillan and his fellow national security cadre exacted revenge on me when I was finally banned from Twitter or from Twitter X. And what does my permanent removal say about Twitter's new boss, Elon Elmo, who advertises Twitter as a platform that champions free speech while promising to build the everything app where you could, like we said, presumably lose your access to your bank messaging history for violating dubious speech codes. So, Gordon McMillan was one of many high-ranking staffers rightly fired from the company upon Musk's acquisition. From Kit's perspective, while the owner's politics could be further removed from his own, He's largely defended and embraced the changes that's been implemented, as has Reef, and in some ways have at least played a wait-and-see game, but while remembering that this guy, A, is a massive intelligence contractor, okay, as well as that he refuses to take a position on Julian Assange, which is a glaring red flag if you're really about free speech. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. David Sirota. What? Uh, yeah. I also, by the way, and I'll show you that, I recently challenged Judd Legume on that, who gave a bullshit, weaselly, conniving answer, saying that there's a hundred things that he could talk about, he just doesn't see anything to talk about on that topic. What? Mm -hmm. Anyway. Congratulations on being the world's biggest bitch! Well... During an October 26th, 2023 all-hands meeting at Twitter headquarters, that is the one-year anniversary from when he bought the company, Musk opened his remarks by announcing that he was transforming the company from what it was, Twitter 1.0, to the Everything app, which is like WeChat. He vowed to Perfect. establish, he vowed to establish, quote, a single application that encompasses everything. We know what happens when you try to do yeah. everything. You can do payments, messages, video, calling, whatever you'd like from one single convenient place. We just don't have that. It doesn't exist outside of China. Like I said, WeChat. Mm. Right? Um, yep. I, might have, I might not have been using Twitter for everything, but it was an extremely useful tool in my personal and professional life. My banning offered me a stark illustration of the dangers of relying so heavily on a privately owned social media app, especially one that provides features that are almost essential in a digital world, meaning it should be made a utility. Many, yes. are, many are anxious. Many are anxious about the rise of digital payments and currencies, for this would inevitably grant financial institutions and governments monopoly power over how citizens can spend their cash, and even more gravely, 
whether they can, whether they can. Fall foul of such powerful forces, even accidentally, and you might find yourself frozen out of your life savings, perhaps forever. If Twitter is to truly become an everything ever? app, forever, forever, ever, 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 ever. That probably got cut out. <laughs> um, <laughs> what? It? Forever, ever? What, you're, you're forever? My Chris Rock impression, sure, yes. That one's better. The, the implications yeah. of a ban would be greatly multiplied, with suspensions effectively locking a user out of every sphere of their public and private life. We thankfully haven't reached that point yet, but the consequences of Twitter's arbitrary suspension process are very real. There are now scores of people, comrades, collaborators, critics, and journalistic sources from whom I'm now cut off perhaps forever. That's because these assholes won't get on Substack Notes, because, by the way, you can find him on Substack Notes. You can also find him over on Telegram. You on a privately funded platform again? Probably not the best idea. Telegram. Mm -hmm. There's other ones, too. Yeah. Like we said, diversification platform whack-a-mole, like we've been advocating for from minute one. Meanwhile... Mm -hmm. The contents of our conversation seem to have been rendered permanently inaccessible, except perhaps by Elmo Musk himself. Yes, I can't find my DM thread with Kit Clarenberg from before he got suspended. The vaguely yeah. explained arbitrary suspension means that he's not only being deprived the ability to express his opinions in a public forum, hold the powerful to account, expose hypocrisy, criminality, and even genocide, and directly engage with his supporters and detractors. It also means that he's lost a platform through which to conduct sensitive conversations with sources around the globe. Yeah. Right? This is, like, so infuriating. Was it, is this the start of something worse? Well, <laughs> this is like foreshadowing what Facebook is now doing to his article. Remember, this was written a while back. In March. Yeah. In a June 2019 op-ed, United Nations Special Rapporteur on Torture, Neil Smelzer, once wrote that once, Nick, once WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange had been dehumanized through isolation, ridicule, and shame, just like the witches we used to burn at the stake, it was easy to deprive him of his most fundamental rights without provoking public outrage worldwide. Unquote. I highly encourage everybody to read Neil Smelzer's book, about the torture of Julian Assange. A key component of the WikiLeaks founder's isolation, unquote, unquote, was the Ecuadorian embassy cutting off his internet access in March of 2018. As I previously revealed, that act was just one aspect of a wide-ranging black propaganda campaign executed by a British intelligence cutout called the Integrity Initiative. By falsely framing Assange as a Russian, call it that. by false, yeah, of course they do, right? Because they always name it the most dystopian, horrifying shit. That's <laughs> the complete opposite of what it is. So what it is, yeah, yeah. Yep. By falsely framing Julian as a Russian agent, London successfully pressured Quito into banning his personal visits as well as any and all communication with the outside world. Immediately thereafter, British police launched Operation Pelican, a scheme designed to extract him from the embassy and ultimately transfer him into U.S. custody. They were all in cahoots on this together. Operation Pelican succeeded one year later when, they, when Ecuador exchanged Julian for an IMF loan, a $4 billion IMF loan, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And Assange has festered in Brelmarsh Prison, Britain's Gitmo, ever since. Free Julian Assange. God Almighty, free Julian Assange. As he awaits extradition to Washington, where he could face 175 years in a supermax prison, and special administrative measures, by the way, and future charges yeah. potentially that could carry the death penalty, rendering that 175 years null and void, Assange has been blocked from communicating with the outside world. We would love, I mean, I am dying. I think we all are. I know, Misty, we're dying to hear from him. We want to hear his voice. We want to hear what he has to say. We want to in interview him. We want to speak uninterrupted 
uncontrolled access directly to the man. Let him speak. They're not letting him do that. Press photographers were even prohibited from capturing his wedding day inside the jail on the grounds of national security. We've covered that at length. Is Kit's Twitter or suspension part of a similar effort to isolate him? So when the British state deprives him of his most fundamental rights, it won't provoke public outrage? Yes. Yes, yes, it will, Kit. <clears throat> Alternatively, and you're not Julian Assange, and I don't think that he's trying to equate himself to Julian Assange, but he's trying to equate what they're doing to him, the way to isolate to the same way that they did to Julian. Alternatively, recall the Twitter role, the, the role that Twitter played in the case of independent journalist Steve Sweeney, who was arbitrarily detained in Mexico while on his way to cover Nicaragua's November 2021 election, which the U.S. State Department had condemned. Hosta and Fiorella, I believe, also were in Nicaragua for that um, and covered that yep. election for the Convo Couch. Steve Sweeney recently was interviewed and was on the Politics of Survival with Tar Reid on INN. So you can check that out, too. Sweeney mm -hmm. might have languished in prison for interminable period had word not immediately spread across Twitter, resulting in his release after three nightmarish days in custody without food or clean water. Activists in Mexico were at the forefront mm. of the push to free Sweeney. Shout out to those yep. brave activists. Since May of 2023, when British counter-terror officials detained, interrogated, and digitally strip-searched him for six hours without granting his right to silence or privacy, he's found travel unnerving, particularly the act of arriving at, walking through, and exiting airports. Understandably so. He says, I don't yeah. know what information global databases display about me, which claims regarding my character have been sh shared with a foreign government, or whether I've been erroneously flagged as an international security threat. Influential security state tied figures like Paul Mason have openly clamored for me to be jailed as punishment for my journalistic activities. Heidi Backram, the British pro-Israel activist, who led the campaign to mass report me on Twitter over my solidarity with Palestine, has expressed hope that I will never again be allowed to visit my homeland. Her supporters have echoed mm. this sentiment. Gross. Here are clear indicators that indications that a number of shadowy intelligence-linked elements are monitoring my activity online. Or there are. In November of 2023, an Irish defense consultant who claims to have advised government, military, and civil society actors in Ukraine and other European countries regarding defense policy bizarrely alleged that Clarenberg showed his FSB signature training as early as 2014? <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. He says, I have no idea what they were alluding to and certainly have never received any training by Russian intelligence, but it's not unreasonable to think I'd be in the military intelligence, the military alliances crosshairs. That same month, the NATO Stratcom Center of Excellence described me as one of the agents and sympathizers of a hostile regime in a report which effusively advocated for the cyberbullying, harassment, stalking, and doxing of anti-imperialists. Hmm. Yeah. So, apparently, not content with simply targeting him personally, these same forces have relentlessly, relentlessly attacked the Gray Zone as well. Kit is the editor in chief of the Gray Zone UK. In August of 2022, longtime British intelligence operative Ross Burley publicly smeared the Gray Zone as a Russian propaganda outlet asserted that it was Russian scum. <laughs> incredibly irresponsible for YouTube and other social media companies to platform our journalists. The cause of his ire may have been our 2021 report on leaked files that exposed details on Britain's wide-ranging clandestine intelligence operations targeting Russia. <coughs> In no. response... 
Twitter took the unprecedented step of, of applying a warning label to each and every tweet linked to this report, cautioning users that it contained materials obtained through hacking. The policy backfired, however, right? Policy backfired, however, after countless users mocked the label and turned it into a meme. Others, meanwhile, suggested Twitter's label simply amounted to a seal of authenticity that confirmed the leaked material's veracity. As, as to the question of why the social network chose to, slip, to slap this label on the gray zone exclusively and overlook Western-funded OSINT collectives such as Belling Crap, which routinely publish stolen material, recent developments may provide some clue. What do you mean? In February, yeah. Politico revealed that Britain's Defense and Security Media Advisory Committee had been unsuccessfully attempting to woo major social media platforms to join its board. The committee is a ministry defense run censorship mechanism tasked with dictating which security related stories mainstream media is authorized to report. Like I said, we don't have we have free speech in the United States. In Britain, they don't have that. When the committee asks British journalists Allegedly we have that. Right. When the committee asks British journalists and editors <laughs> to withhold information from the public, they almost always comply. Politico quoted Jeffrey Dodds, a DSMA secretary and former military official, as saying Google and Meta were among the social media giants on the committee's wish list. No surprise, he proposed that tech firms monitor their platforms for content relating to Britain's national security, quote unquote, then seek the committee's advice on whether to censor. Yet, his effort has been so far unsuccessful as the companies reportedly, quote, felt that they couldn't sit on the board because it was too linked to the government, unquote. Give me a mother. Mm. Too linked? All these guys are, are linked mm. to the government. No. They're crawling with agents. They're doing the government's bidding constantly. Still, Dodds remained optimistic that the British government could come up with a grand bargain with the tech giants. Then hopefully we'll be able to get the tech giants back on board. Fuck you. Politico said the committee was yeah. steadfast in its determination to get social media firms abroad, or aboard, and abroad. Dodds remarked that moving forward, quote, there's probably going to be less print, just as much broadcasting, and a continued increase in social media and online news, but we need to get into this game. So what did Facebook do, by the way, in Canada? They shut down news entirely. That's the next step mm. is these social media platforms are now just shutting down news so they don't have to deal with being accused of misinformation. Oh, of course. Which honestly could be another reason oh. why Facebook pulled Kit's article. It could be deemed as news which they don't want published anywhere. <laughs> Publicly available uh -huh. minutes of the DSMA's uh, committee's June 2023 meeting show that the body's deputy secretary, retired Navy Captain John Perkins, disclosed that between October 2022 and April 2023, material of, quote, extreme sensitivity in national security terms had been protected from inadvertent disclosure. Thanks to the committee's interventions with the journalists. How much you want to bet that had to do with yep. Ukraine? This material uh, was of the most probably. sensitive nature he'd seen. Maybe something about Nord Stream, possibly. Wait, no, yep. it didn't. It didn't blow up until September of 2023. It could have been the planning of Nord Stream mm. potentially, because we know that in February, sure. Biden had already said, "Well, we." Well, we know we're going to do it. We're not going to allow it to be built, right? They knew that then that they were going to blow it up. Yep. Mm -hmm. While the nature of that material was unstated, Perkins may well have been referring to a series of, in of investigations that the Gray Zone published throughout that precise period detailing London's secret and pivotal role in escalating the Ukraine proxy war. Hmm. Given this outlet's reputation as a leading source of insight on the cloak and dagger machinations of the U.S. and British-led Western national security state, 
the DSMA committee would welcome its suppression on Twitter X and other platforms, at least as much as it did in my indefinite suspension. Again, remember, they're coming after Rumble, too. After years yeah. of pressure from Western security state operatives, Kit was finally banished from Twitter X under the watch of billionaire owner who has flaunted his ideological opposition to censorship. On his coming everything app, it seems everything you can and say will be used against you, especially if you support, if you if you go against Zionists um, and you call them out and expose them for their crap. Please support the gray zone. Yeah. Please support Kit Clarenberg. Please support Jesse Jett with that QR code down there. And please support INN if you can. These people have, and we love them for it. People like Charlie Mack and Anna Mayers, who are actually like in chat right now. Love you to love you to pieces. Thank you so much for all your support. Hemp Car. Hemp Car yeah. gave us Hemp Car gave us four dollars on Friday night during Angel's 50th stream. Thank you so much. We did see you over there for that too. Oh, that's nice. Really appre appreciate Money, that. Please. Right? Um, yes, Anna, appropriate billing crap. If you have, <laughs> well, we've had plenty of longies, but if you have not already and you are of a means and able to and are getting value here, we do this on a volunteer basis and on a user funded basis. So, whatever you can do to help us, there are some ways to support monthly subscriptions on Patreon, Substack, one time donations on Rumble, Cash App. And then we're going to put up a QR code, which already is up or was up. Uh, and here. There we go. That's for Jesse's computer fund. Probably Mac hooked us up on Friday night on the Jesse stream. And uh, and we're at 47% right now. We're almost halfway to our $1,000 goal to help Jesse there. Uh, we'll get to Jesse coming to New York City. I know we talked about that last week. So, 